Hey everyone, so today I'm going to teach you how to differentiate with respect to x, and I'm going to do that by going over question number one. So we need to differentiate with respect to x, y is equal to x cubed plus 3x squared minus 7x plus 9. So I'm going to teach you how to differentiate by going over this example. We're going to go over each part of the function one piece at a time. So the x cubed, then the 3x squared, and then the minus 7x and plus 9. I'll do my best to explain everything, but if you have comments or questions, you can drop them down below, and I'll go into more detail there and try and answer all your questions. So we are differentiating y with respect to x. So we do dy over dx. And now we're going to work with each part of the function separately. So if you want to differentiate x cubed all you have to do is bring the power to the front so you multiply it by the power by bringing it to the front and then you take one away from the original power so bringing the three to the front and then we take one off the power giving us three x squared okay don't know if you want to pause the video and give that a go for the next term so for the next term we have three x squared so we want to do the same thing again we bring the power down to the front so it's going to be three originally then we times it by two because we're times in the front number by the original power so it's going to be three times two at the front and then we take one from the power so we would have six x squared but we're taking one from the power so it's going to leave us with six x okay now if you have any x with a constant in front of it for example we have minus seven x what you can do is just remove the x that's because we're effectively working with x to the power of one so you can imagine you would have x to the power of one we bring that power down so it'd be minus 7 times 1 so okay we've got minus 7 x to the power of 1 and we need to remove that power by 1 so subtract 1 from the power that will give us x to the power of 0 x to the power of 0 is 1 that leaves us with minus 7 but you don't need to explain all that or think about it too much but that's how it works and you can just remove the x so that gives us minus 7 and as for the plus 9 constants will disappear and I suppose that would be because we effectively have 9 times x to the power of 0 because it's 9 times 1 so when you multiply the front by 0 it will all disappear yeah does that make sense if not let me know down below so that's how you differentiate with respect to x again comments or questions drop them down below I appreciate it, it was probably quite brief uh, if you want more visuals let me know just let me know what you guys think cool anyway hope you enjoyed watching the video uh, best of luck with all your maths Hey everyone, so today I'm going to be explaining the chain rule for differentiation. Now this one's not too hard, but let me know if you have any questions and I'll answer them down below. So question one, differentiate y is equal to 2x squared plus 5x all cubed. Now because we have a function all cubed, we're going to use the chain rule to differentiate this. First thing you're going to want to do is let u equal 2x squared plus 5x. So let u equal whatever is in the brackets. So that means y is going to be equal to u cubed. And the chain rule is that dy over dx is equal to dy over du times du over dx. So if we want to find dy over dx, all we need to do is find dy over du and du over dx and then times them together. So dy over du, y is equal to u cubed. So differentiating y with respect to u, we're going to get 3u squared. And then for du over dx, well, u is equal to 2x squared plus 5x. So just differentiate with respect to x. That's going to give us 4x plus 5. So multiplying them together, we're going to get 3u squared times 4x plus 5. Substituting the u back in, we're going to get 3 times 2x squared plus 5x all squared times 4x plus 5. Now you can obviously expand it out but quite often with these questions they will give you a particular x value that you need to put in at this point so they'll be like what is dy over dx at x is equal to 1 so you can just shove the value into there if you're doing that I think it's probably fine to leave it like this so I'll leave some other relevant videos down below as well and I have a differentiation playlist if you're interested hope that helped and best of luck with all your maths hey everyone so today I'm going to be doing the product rule for differentiation so question one says differentiate x squared times sine x using the product rule the product rule is that if y is equal to ux times v of x then dy over dx is equal to u times dv over dx plus v times du over dx so let's define u of x and v of x u of x is x squared and v of x is sine of x so du over dx is going to be equal to 2x dv over dx is equal to cos of x so dy over dx is equal to x squared cos of x plus 2x sine of x. Now I realize that was a bit quick, but you know, if you have any questions or anything, you can drop them down below. I have other videos, you know, if you don't know what dy over dx is or all these other things, you know, I've got a playlist on differentiation. I've got all the basics on there. If you want to check that out, I hope the product rule video helped you. And if you have comments or questions, you can drop them down below.
Hey everyone, so today I'm going to show you how to find the stationary points of a curve using differentiation. I'm going to do that by going over question one, and if you have any comments or questions throughout the video, just drop them down below. So question one says, a curve has equation y is equal to x cubed minus 3x squared plus 1. Calculate the stationary points of the curve. First thing you want to do is differentiate the equation. If you don't know how to do that, I will pop down a video below on differentiation. dy over dx in this case is going to be 3x squared squared minus 6x and we're going to set that equal to 0 because the gradient will be 0 at the stationary points. So 3x squared minus 6x is equal to 0. We're going to take out a 3x. That's going to leave us with 3x times x minus 2. So now we have 3x times x minus 2 equaling 0. We know that x will either be 0 or equal to 2. So now we have the x values of the stationary point, we can sub these x values into the original equation, and then that will give us the corresponding y value. So y is equal to x cubed minus 3x squared plus 1, and we have x equaling 0 and x equaling 2. If we sub in x is equal to 0, we get y is equal to 0 cubed minus 3 times 0 squared plus 1, so y is equal to 1. This gives us our first stationary point of 0, 1. For our second stationary point, y is equal to 2 cubed minus 3 times 2 squared plus 1 so y is equal to 8 minus 12 plus 1 adding these together we get y is equal to minus 3 so our second stationary point is 2 minus 3 hopefully that made sense hopefully it was clear if you do have any comments or questions you can just let me know down below i will be doing another video where we describe whether these stationary points are minimum or maximum so keep an eye out for that hey everyone so today we're going to be defining stationary points as minimum or maximum in my previous video i found the stationary points of the curve y is equal to x cubed minus 3x squared plus 1. I'll leave that link down below if you haven't seen it. And I'll also leave a video link down below on how to differentiate. So I've kept in dy over dx, which is the differentiation of our curve, and that's equal to 3x squared minus 6x. And our two stationary points are 0, 1, and 2 minus 3. So if we want to work out whether these values are a minimum or a maximum stationary point, we need to differentiate the differentiation again. So we're going to have d squared y over dx squared, and all you do is differentiate as you normally would so we differentiate 3x squared minus 6x that's going to give us 6x minus 6 and from here we just sub in the values from our stationary points so we're going to be working with 6x minus 6 so for our first stationary point 0 1 x is 0 so we sub in 0 that gives us 6 times 0 minus 6 and that's going to equal minus 6 this value is negative so it means 0 1 is going to be a maximum for our second stationary point 2 minus 3 we sub in 2 so it's going to give us 6 times 2 minus 6 that's going to give us 6 this is a positive value so 0.2 minus 3 is a minimum hopefully that makes sense hopefully it was clear if you do have any comments or questions just drop them down below and i'll answer them for you hey everyone so today i'm going to teach you how to differentiate an equation to find the gradient of a graph at a given point so we have question number one which says find the gradient of the graph y is equal to x cubed minus 7x squared minus 1 at point x equaling 2. So you're going to need to know how to differentiate. I just uploaded a video on that if you want to use that as reference. So let's first differentiate this graph. So y is equal to x cubed minus 7x squared minus 1. Let's do dy over dx and that's going to be equal to 3x squared minus 14x. From here we can just sub values in of x equaling 2. So we're going to have 3 times 2 squared minus 14 times 2. That's going to give us 12 minus 28 and that's going to leave us with minus 16. So minus 16 is going to be the gradient at that point on the curve. Hopefully it made sense. Hopefully it was clear. Any comments or questions just drop them down below and best of luck with your maths. Hey everyone so today I'm going to be teaching you how to find the equation of a tangent to a curve. I'm going to do that by going over this past paper question and along the way we're also going to be using the chain rule for differentiation. So we have y is equal to x minus 2 all to the power of 4. We need to find the equation of the tangent to the curve at the point where x is equal to 0 and this is a free mark question. So first thing we want to do is differentiate y is equal to x minus 2 all to the power of 4 because it's in the form that we have the x minus 2 in the bracket all to the power of 4. We're going to use the chain rule technique. So dy over dx is equal to dy over du times du over dx. Let u equal x minus 2 so let u equal whatever is in the bracket. So y is equal to u to the power of 4. So dy over du is 4u cubed. And du over dx is equal to 1. So dy over dx is going to be equal to dy over du times du over dx. And that's going to be equal to 4u cubed times 1. 
which is equal to 4u cubed, which is equal to 4 times x minus 2 cubed. So we have dy over dx, and we're working with the point where x is equal to 0. So let's sub in x is equal to 0. So x equals 0, the gradient is going to be 4 times 0 minus 2 cubed, and that's going to be equal to minus 32. So now we have the gradient. Let's find the other missing parts of this equation. So we already know x is equal to 0, dy over dx is equal to minus 32. Now the line we're going to be working out is in the form y is equal to mx plus c. So y is equal to minus 32x plus c because m is the gradient. So the only other unknown we have now is c. So let's try and work out c. Now I want to use the original equation of y is equal to x minus 2 all to the power 4. And we're going to find out the value of c because even though it's two different equations, they're meeting at the same point. So we can still apply same rules at these points. So for example, where x is equal to 0, which is the point we're working with. We know y is going to be equal to x minus 2 all to the power 4. So y is going to be equal to minus 2 to the power 4, which is equal to 16. So we know we have a point 0, 16 on the straight line. So if y is equal to minus 32x plus c, let's sub in our x and y values of the point 0, 16. So we have 16 is equal to minus 32 times 0 plus c. So c is 16. So we pop that into the final equation there. Cool. Hopefully that makes sense. If you do have any comments or questions, just drop them down below and I will do my best to get back to you there. Best a lot with your maths and thanks for watching. Hey everyone, welcome to the video. I'm going to show you how to differentiate using first principles. So question one asks us to differentiate x squared using first principles. So we're going to use this formula, which is f dash of x is equal to f of x plus h minus f of x over h as h tends towards zero. So you're going to want to sub in your values. So f of x plus h in this case is going to be x plus h squared minus x squared because we're working with x squared here over h. From there you can just times it out so that's going to give us x squared plus 2hx plus h squared minus x squared on the top and h on the bottom. Now you can simplify it down a bit as the x squareds cancel out leaving us with 2hx plus h squared over h. Divide it by h so we're going to get 2x plus h. Then as we're here and h is tending to zero we can effectively just set h to zero and that's going to just leave us with 2x. Hopefully that made sense. Hopefully it was clear. If you have any comments or questions just let me know down below and best of luck with your maths. Hey everyone, so today I'm going to show you how to differentiate sine of x using first principles. This might be a bit of a longer video, so please bear with me. And if you have any comments or questions, just drop them down below and I'll do my best to get back to you there. So starting with the first principles equation, we have f dash of x is equal to the limit as h tends to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. So subbing in f of x is equal to sine of x because sine of x is the function we're working with. That's going to give us sine of x plus h minus sine of x over h. Obviously still in the brackets with the limits as h tends to zero. So next we need to use the addition formula and that is sine of a plus b is equal to sine of a times cos of b plus cos of a times sine of b. And we're going to use that on the sine of x plus h. So now we've expanded the sine of x plus h using the addition formula. We have sine of x times cos of h plus cos of x times sine of h minus sine of x over h. The next thing you're going to want to do from here is group together the sine of x's. So for example, we have a sine of x at the start multiplying the cos of h and we have a minus sine of x on the right hand side so if we group them together and take a factor of sine of x out that leaves us with sine of x times cos of h minus 1 and then we're left with the plus cos of x sine of h all over h so as h is going to be getting really small as it tends to zero we can use these small angle approximations and these small angle approximations are that sine of h is approximately h and cos of h is approximately one minus a half h squared so we have sine of h on the right hand side of the equation we're going to be subbing that out for h and at the start of the equation we have sine of x times cos of h minus 1, we're going to change out that cos of h for 1 minus a half h squared. So in that little bracket that I've got multiplying sine of x, we're going to have the 1 minus a half h squared minus 1. So the 1s cancel out. So we're going to be left with sine of x times minus a half h squared in that bracket. Hopefully this all makes sense so far. Let me know if you do have any questions as we go through it. So basically, as I said on the last image, now we've got minus a half h squared sine of x 
plus h cos of x over h because we use these small angle approximations as we have h squared in the first term and h in the second term and everything is divided by h we can divide both terms by h so the term on the left is going to be minus a half h times sine of x then the term on the right is just going to be plus cos of x now as h tends to zero minus a half h sine of x tends to zero because it's being multiplied by h and h is tending to zero so the whole function is going to tend to zero so it disappears and that's just going to leave us with cos of x cool hopefully that makes sense i guess it is quite a roundabout way to differentiate using those first principles and obviously in most exams you can just go from sine of x to cos of x you don't have to do this whole process but if for any reason you have to do this this is how you do it hopefully that made sense hopefully it was clear if you do have any comments or questions as i said before drop them down below and i'll try to get back to you there best of luck with all your maths and thanks for watching